Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in the Modern OpenGL series. Now in today's lesson, I'm going to go ahead and just talk about a few things regarding order of matrix transformations, which we've been talking about. Because order matters. For instance, you can read the text on my t-shirt here when I have this video transformed in any specific way, whereas normally I record like this. So text on a t-shirt, usually a no-no. Sometimes I do it. And today you can understand <laughs> why this might be a no-no. But with that said, let me go ahead and give you a different example to talk about why order matters. I'll go ahead and illustrate this with a drawing pad here. So let's go ahead and dive into this lesson here. Now, again, before I get into the code, let's go ahead and draw here. Now, again, we've been talking about in the previous lessons how we specify vertices and they have a particular position where they start. And all I mean by that is in some vertex buffer object, you specified the positions here, whatever the X, Y and Z are. But over time, you're going to apply different transformations to get each of those vertices and in the end, some object to move, rotate, translate, scale, the different types of operations we've been talking about. But let's again consider two different scenarios. I'll go ahead and draw this out in 2D here on two different axes. And you can actually try this experiment if you've got enough space in your room or wherever you're watching this. So go ahead and in experiment one here, Let's call it experiment one uh, here. And then we'll have experiment two. Experiment number two. And again, we'll start you here. So the experiment that I want you to do in experiment number one is to go ahead and walk five steps forward, okay? And then turn left, okay? So go ahead and do that experiment. And forward in this particular case, we're going to go ahead and just say is along the Y axis in this example. So we're going to go one, let's, let's move up here. One, two, three, four, five. And then we turn left here. Okay. And we'll walk five steps, walk five steps. Okay. So we end up somewhere here. If you want to actually put a coordinate negative five and five here. Okay, and again, you can do that experiment in real life, orient yourself in a particular direction, whatever your default orientation is, walk five steps, turn left, walk five more steps. All right, now let's go ahead and repeat that same experiment. So orient yourself in the same direction, get back to your starting position here. And we're going to flip the instructions. So this is going to be a uh, turn left. And again, we're turning left 90 degrees, five steps, you walk forward. And then we'll, again, continue to walk five steps forward. Okay, five steps forward. And I'll move out of the way here. I know my hand writing is getting a little bit uh, wonky, but hopefully you followed along <laughs> in this demo. So what are we going to do? Turn left here. So we're facing uh, left here and going five steps. So we're going to go ahead and say one, two, three, four, five. Okay, and then we step forward again, five more steps. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so in this case, we end up at negative 10, zero. So you can see the actual coordinate has changed, even though we've got the two same steps here. But the difference was the order that we did these steps. Now, again, that might seem relatively obvious, the order that we're running these experiments in. Uh, or, or the steps in each of the experiments lands us in a different position, especially if you've taken place in this and actually walked forward, as I mentioned here. All right, so with that said, let's go ahead and see what that means for our actual transformations. So what we've been doing so far, we've set up our program, we've got some vertices, we've got our pipeline, and now in our main loop, in our drawing stage, or right before we draw, I should say, where we're sort of updating our positions, we've done a few transformations. So let me go ahead and run this in case you haven't been watching the previous videos, but make sure you do so you understand the different transformations that we are taking. So we've compiled, and I'll go ahead and run this and bring it into the screen. So you can see we have this object we've pushed into the screen. And let me go ahead and make our code just a little bit smaller so I can uh, demonstrate this for you. Uh, what we've done here is... Uh, we have some offset, so we've pushed into the screen two units. That's what this first translation is. And then we rotate, if there's any rotation. 
So let me go ahead and add a little bit of rotation here. Say negative 65 degrees, converted to radians. That's what this step's doing here. And then we scaled our model in half. Okay, so that was the different operations that we've been doing. Now let's go ahead and change these operations a little bit here. Okay, so what I'm going to go ahead and do, and I'll go ahead and recompile this, is let's go ahead and switch our rotation which, with our translation. Okay, so let's go ahead and just switch these around. And of course, when this comes to uh, programming, I've got to make sure that I declare our model matrix here, 4x4 four four matrix. And this means we're going to rotate our shape first. Okay, so that's like doing that left turn first and then pushing our shape back two units or two units into our screen. Again, based off of our right hand rule, the middle finger being the Z axis, positive is toward you. So that's why we're pushing back into the screen. Uh, negative two units, that's the initial value for U underscore offset. Um, let's go ahead and see where we land now. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and compile and I'll go ahead and run this program. If I run it in its default state with no rotation, nothing's changed. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, kind of fit this in the screen here, uh, just so we can see. Again, keeping eye on rotate, translate, and scale. Okay, but as soon as I add a little bit of rotation here, so I'm just going to uh, press the right arrow a few times to give us a few different degrees here. Let's see how our program changes. Okay. And well, it looks like I need to make one more update here. So it's not changing at all here. Uh, again, since I switched the order here, uh, our translate, well, that's not going to change at all because it's working off of the identity matrix. So as always, we got to check our code here. So let's go ahead and feed in our model matrix here. So again, our, our model matrix here, which is initialized here with rotation, let's go ahead and see what happens here. Let me recompile this, rerun it, and now let's see what we get here. Okay, now this is kind of interesting. I don't see anything here. So if I rotate a little bit or maybe move our uh, offset back or forward, hmm, looks like we're not getting much here. So again, we might have to debug a little bit. And this is actually a classic thing in graphics. It's where's my object? <laughs> we have to play this game a little bit here uh, and try to figure out or debug what's going on. Well, usually what's happening is if I'm initializing my model matrix here, uh, for the rotation, let's go ahead and do this uh, like we had before uh, for our translate uh, and make sure that we have the identity matrix here. Okay, so just sort of step by step debugging this. Uh, and now it looks like we're in a good uh, or reasonable state here. Okay, so we have an identity matrix there. Uh, so again, I like to, uh, you know, leave some of these uh, mistakes in because it's, well, it's the most often thing that I do <laughs> when I'm working with OpenGLs. Where's my object? But that aside, we've got our object here. Now, it's not rotated at all. It's zero degrees. So I can use up and down to move our object forward and back. Because essentially what we're doing at line 409 is not really making any changes, right? The rotation's the same. But again, let's go ahead and orient our uh, object back at negative two, its default state. And then what I'm going to do is press the right arrow a little bit here. And wow, look how it's turning now. It's actually sort of rotating around this uh, pivot here. It's almost like it's an arm extending out negative two units and then twisting around. Okay. Which is very different than if I move in my object forward here, uh, if that's my fist here, and just turning it a little bit. Okay. Like it was doing on its own axis. So that's an exact uh, example of where the or uh, order matters of our transformations. So we're rotating first and then pushing back, well, however many units our translation is. So let's go ahead and just play around with this a little bit more. So if I bring this object a little bit closer, and let's bring it really close to zero and then rotate it. Well, again, it's still rotating about that arm, so we can see how it's changed here. And I'm going to make it push it back into the screen very far here. And we'll see we're sort of extending our lever out, uh, if you want to think about this as, you know, an arm here. And if I rotate a little bit, it's increased the orbit that this object is moving about, which is, you know, the origin. So that's just a demonstration of how order matters. The same thing applies with our scale here. OK, so if we wanted to uh, scale our object first or, or whatever, uh, that can create a different ordering of our transformations. So folks usually think about this in the sense of maybe memorizing 
rotate translate scale rts if you want that sort of orbiting behavior one object around the other uh, or translate rotate scale but i just find it easier to think about or just orient yourself in the world somewhere actually walk or do the experiment or use your arm uh, and your fist as an example to try to figure out where you are in space as you're first learning graphics so anyways folks that's just a demonstration about order mattering now another way you can kind of think about this and that i like to tell folks when i'm teaching graphics uh, and let's make this just a little bit bigger here is to think about the order of your transformations as uh, concatenation. Meaning if you're doing a rotate, then a translate in a scale, think about that like a string, RTS, and that would be different than again doing the translation first, then the rotation, then the scale, etc. Okay, so TRS would be a different string than whatever starts with RTS. Okay, so if you think about it that way, again, it's just another way to remember as you're learning computer graphics that the order of these operations matter. Because at the end of this uh, day, again, what we're doing here is creating matrices here and multiplying them. Okay, it's a four by four matrix multiplication. All right, folks, so with that said, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Hope you had a fun one playing around uh, with this demo. Hope you're keeping up to date with your code and able to follow along with some of the examples and are enjoying the series. As always, if you have questions, feel free to engage in the comment section below and make sure you give this a subscribe so you don't miss the other OpenGL lessons that are coming here. All right, folks, thanks for your time and attention, and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one.